Good morning, folks. You're watching a plasma filament solar tornado departing on the northwestern limb of our star. Going to see a few twisters in the show today. We've got awesome space news, too. And let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with the coronal holes arriving at the central heliographic longitudes and an active region indeed peaks into view at the 8 o'clock position. Solar wind is very quiet at the moment. We are awaiting the solar wind from those coronal holes due at the end of the week, but as of now, all is calm geomagnetically. This was the scene in Iowa. There is a ton of damage from this storm, which also made itself nice and photogenic there from afar. Let us quickly recall that tornadoes are likely peripheral vortices to the larger low-pressure cell. You don't see the tornadoes in the core of the low, but out around and then along outward with the convergence tail of the wind. Now, this next one requires a bit more thinking, and much more thinking, in fact, than the crew that took the footage. After they initially confirmed that this was not made by their submersible, their experts concluded that there could be no other explanation, so somehow, despite their footage log and pathway and the sustained nature of this thing suggesting otherwise, the official story is that the vertical thrusters on their diving unit overcame giant ocean flows. Okay, this is of course ridiculous, and in the footage, the grad student and professor are absolutely astounded. Neither knows what it is or how it could even be possible, but it is the sort of thing that Billy has made in the water in our lab at much smaller scales. This is page 160 from the new Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, by the way, and it's the global electric circuit model, but to visualize it, he had to use fluorescence in water. You just need the vertical currents coming up in the case of this underwater tornado. And so just out of curiosity, I first went and located the marine park off the northeast coast of Australia. Then I checked to see if there was any seismic activity and the largest in days for the region had hit the nearest fault line just four hours before that footage was taken. It is now well established that earthquakes enhance the ion release upward in the circuit. It just so happens that where you would expect to see the vertical vortex action from a global electric circuit perspective would be the core of the low and then the peripheral ones around and down along the tail going right into that area where the underwater tornado occurred. And of course, since the footage was shot, the largest seismic activity struck that exact same fault nearby, 6.1 just this morning, and we know that these ion releases can signal themselves for days to weeks before the larger quake hits. So to summarize, they first confirmed it wasn't their sub, and that is sort of obvious when you see the sustained power of the vortex and the slow motion of the unit. The experts didn't know what it was. The experts they consulted gave them a nonsense answer, and there is a much, much better one. Let's go out to space next, where SDSS, Chandra, and the Very Large Array are combining for a heck of a storytelling photo. Blue would be the X-ray glow seen by Chandra, hot gas photoionized by the massive core G-clusters marked. Red is the radio signal seen by VLA, and oddly enough, the green marks are the visible wavelength red light seen by SDSS. They probably should have swapped those. Jets, plasma clouds, and enough questions to keep a researcher busy for years. Up next, this is now the fourth or fifth time I've seen Avi Loeb from Harvard finally get one foot off the photon train and put it on the electric one. This time, it's not just him, but his colleagues from NASA, Stanford, and Princeton, giving serious looks to the potential for solar, wind, and magnetic sails to carry ships across the cosmos. Turns out, when they all get together with the goal of finding feasibility, they get a glimpse of the future. Well, folks, there is officially a new class of Nova, fast blue optical transients. Apparently the visible flash to these are spectacularly brighter in those visible wavelength ranges than other nova, which they say is caused by a super excess of material around the star. Essentially, there was a micronova and then a not so micro of a nova afterwards. They like the concept of a binary feeding that material down onto the system beforehand, but as always, recognize that they haven't spotted those binaries and it probably works for a singlet star as well. Up next, this is the Sun, and this is Mars, like you've never seen it before. They have mapped the electric currents around Mars due to its interaction with the Sun, and this is truly fun to watch. It is in fact an idealized state model, but more or less this is what the solar wind and induced field interactions look like to create the electromagnetic environment around the red planet. They've even mapped how solar wind and magnetic fields work to strip Mars' atmosphere, explaining how stronger solar winds are not a friend to our neighboring planet's air. Now, this should offer a window into the complexity at Earth, 
given that even the induced field on Mars is very tiny compared to ours here on our planet. Up next, this one is going to go to AAS, and folks, the creation of primordial fields back to Z20 would be an interesting thing. This is the epoch where stars are beginning to form, and galaxies were thinking about beginning to form, and atoms were still coming together in some places. But alas, magnetic fields could have been created by the first cosmic rays, which makes me wonder why they don't think their precious Big Bang produced them, or was the result of a pinch in the larger fields to begin with. They can't see back far enough to outrun the magnetic universe, and they won't. Last but not least, folks, something so simple, but with big potential. So nanomaterials, in a suspension, can be moved by the application of an external electric field, but only if they are spinning in that suspension. Now, folks, while they have diamonds in their eyes, staring down billions in patent potential for industry and biomedical uses. This would also apply to spinning storms in the atmospheric hydrodynamic suspension of the planet, and when space weather impacts it. It could apply to Earth's core, crust, and total field if the applied electric field from the sun is big enough, and looking larger we can just imagine what that means for the current sheet of the galaxy and our solar system. We literally hit plasma cosmology, one avenue of solar particle forcing of the climate, and of course, if your imagination is working, we also hit Earth's catastrophe cycle and its connection to the sun and galaxy. We've got movies about all three of those topics on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org, also on the channel homepage of our YouTube here, and also with links you can click right below this video in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.